When you get an email from someone who says, hey, this product is particularly durable, you might want to test it because your viewers may be interested. Well, challenge accepted. This is the B1F7 Mini drone. It's a $279 drone on Amazon and there's a $60 coupon right now to save you even more money. And I always like playing with toys, but I definitely like playing with toys when someone sends them to me for free and says, hey, go check out how durable it is. So we're gonna head outside to Mikey's outdoor studio, AKA Mother Nature, the real world where we don't get to go a whole lot because you and me are all techies and we like to play with our devices inside, but today we're not, we're going outside. We're gonna go flat into some trees and see just how durable it is. Come on. I tried to take off earlier, but the trees are in the way. So we're gonna get somewhere a little bit more wide open because apparently the GPS signal doesn't work too good. I wonder if it had GPS like an Apple Watch Ultra with L1 and L5, dual GPS. That's why you need two of them. Oh my word, I literally can't even crash the thing. Did it just fly between the trees? All right, did we manage to break it? Huh? Nope, everything looks like it's intact. Okay, here we go. Can't believe how hard it is to crash when you're trying to crash on purpose. But yeah, when I'm trying not to crash it. All right, let's check it out. Oh, dude. Okay, she's bust. I don't even think that was a big crash. The plastic's kind of cracked. That was two crashes, dude. Although my DJI only managed one and I managed to like bust it up big time. Oh, okay. There's some kind of jet stream up there that it's just catching on. It just wants some kind of gust of wind or something. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think we might have had our fun here with this bad boy. So we crashed over there on the first day of flying. crashed a couple more times over here. I don't think that third one was that bad of a crash. Let's check it out again in slow-mo. And it's kind of semi-flying at this point, but the, uh, the wiggle factor over here is not getting it. So we're gonna go back to the studio and talk about this. Did you hear about the shop that's selling drones? Dude, they're flying off the shelves. So this bad boy is a 60 minute flight time, according to the manufacturer, 4K ultra high def drone. It's a five gigahertz frequency. It's got all the usual stuff, auto return, follow me, circle fly, altitude hold, all that kind of stuff. It comes with two batteries. It comes with a case. It uses a micro SD card on the drone to record its footage and it has brushless motors. There's a few things I actually really like about the drone. Seriously, it's a ridiculous price point. I don't know for a couple hundred bucks what kind of drone you think you're gonna buy, but I have seen the cheap crappy drones because I have two sons and they have had multiple drones and flown them through the house and flown them into the walls. And I have watched them crash many, many times and been irritated by the constant noise and humming and whine of the whirring motors many, many times. This is not one of those. This is a full on real drone, okay? Don't let the price tag fool you. The batteries that come with it are awesome. Firstly, because you just plug in a micro USB-C. No stupid special power adapter, dongle, whatever. My DJI is infuriating. It has this little strip that's so stupid and you put the batteries in and they fall over and they fall out and then you gotta put them back in. Just plug a micro USB-C in and you're done and it goes. The way the camera is shielded here, it's got this like bracket thing going on here. I'll give it to you on the top down view as well. And this is designed to shield that camera when you fly into things, which you will do with a drone. Trust me, 
Even though my flying skills are second to none, which I will prove to you in this footage, where deliberately trying to fly in to a tree, I still managed to fly through like seven trees and miss every one of them. I can't help being so great, okay? I am a natural drone flyer. What do you want me to say? Oh my word, I literally can't even crash the thing. Did it just fly between the trees? But this is a really good idea and it works. The camera took no hits. However, the kind of movement and springiness of the camera itself, although it looks like it's pretty cool, can you see that? I don't know, but I'm hoping that you can. The footage was shakier than I would have liked. And maybe you can get smoother and better at that. There are two speeds when you're flying, you click down on the right remote and it goes into a slow, smoother speed versus the faster, kind of more erratic speed. Again, that's a feature that's very similar to the DJI Mavics and their other drones, and I think it's a great feature. If you are new or newish at flying drones, you wanna set all the settings into the slow mode, the novice mode. Do not go into expert mode because they are like a hypercar that just zigs and zags all over the place where you wanna be more like the old Lincoln Continental. We're just gonna float and glide down the road just taking those bumps in like we're on a sleepy mattress and everything is fine and I don't feel a single thing. So that's what you're gonna to wanna to do. The rotor blades, they're kind of these, these little kind of maneuverable ones that flick around. I think that's a good idea because I can tell you when you fly into stuff, it helps. And again, I flow my Mavic into more than a few things and every time I've caused some damage. This one didn't cause damage every time. And that's about it. It's super easy to get going. It's super easy to use. The controller has another couple of nice features, which I want to point out. On the DJI's, you slot your phone in on the bottom and you're looking at it down below and your controllers are here. On this, you're actually going to slot it in on the top. And I think that just makes way more sense because when you're holding and controlling, now you've seen your screen here and your hands are underneath it. And naturally, your kind of underhands go like this but you don't want to cover that too much because I think that's the uh, antennas. So if you cover them up, it's not going to pick up so well. When I was using the drone and we were flying, trees definitely caused me a few problems. I have lots of trees in the green areas that are near to my home. And so the GPS signal wasn't always perfect, but the second I got away from those trees out into the wide open spaces, it did better. It's a five gigahertz transmitter. And so that's the frequency range it's going to kind of work over to get that signal as far as it can go. You're not gonna fly this thing a mile away and still be in range, okay? Let's not get giddy, but you can get 100 feet or so, which is plenty, and I still like to be able to see that sucker in the air and not just rely on the screen, and for that, it worked pretty well. And I was thinking about frequencies and distances. I was thinking about my buddy who had a drone shop, and he had to close it down, because it never really took off. Now, we goofed around with a bunch of different stuff, okay? Hover mode works great. It has a return to home like most decent drones do. Press that button, it's gonna fly back and land. I don't know about avoidance, obstacle avoidance, that kind of stuff. I didn't get to test it enough and I don't think it's really got those kind of features to a meaningful level. But come on, people. For 200 bucks, do you really think it's going to? My DJI was 1,000 and it still flies into stuff with obstacle avoidance turned on, not just because of my flying skills. Okay, even when I'm returning to home, I have to like pray and hope that it's gonna miss that tree over here and there while it's finding its way around. So none of them really have it figured out. We tried out the follow me mode and it works pretty well. It works surprisingly well. At first I couldn't get it to work. I had to press it a few times and I realized it was because it just wasn't getting a great signal. But I was kind of blown away that a $200 drone or 250 bucks if you don't get it on coupon or whatever would follow me the way that it did. Great feature, definitely borrowed from some advanced drones, but not what you would expect to get at this price point. And then the Circle Me was also really cool. And I got some footage of that for you as well. But there's something really neat about having a drone that can just fly around. And you might be thinking, when am I ever gonna want a drone to fly around? I'm gonna tell you when. I'm gonna dig in the archives before I was ever a YouTuber. And I'm gonna find you some drone footage that I took of me and my two sons playing basketball one day when I bought my DJI for the first time. Now, I wasn't filming this obviously thinking it was gonna one day make its way on YouTube, but look, this is a great example of where drones can do things for you that money can't buy, okay? Forever I will have this footage of me and my two boys on the driveway, shooting some hoops, having fun, and the whole while, 
there is a drone just hovering over in the corner, capturing that memory from above. Could you have captured that with a phone on a tripod? Absolutely. Would it have been the same? No, it wouldn't. It's like down here at the side is not the same as up here pointing down. And maybe it's just me, but I don't think it is. I think that's the beauty of tech. This is where tech makes a difference, a meaningful, positive difference in our lives. And it's why I love talking about it so much. And I love the fact that you guys give me your time to watch the channel. So if you're enjoying this kind of stuff, hit that like button for me and hit the subscribe button. I don't mind if you don't hit the notification bells. If you want to miss out when new stuff drops, that's okay. But it really helps the channel grow. I think most of you are going to agree. It's a really cool feature to be able to capture footage in a way that you could never capture it before. And I grew up at a time without tech. I'm just old enough. And so I think about when I was a kid, riding my bike, no GoPro cameras, no drones, no cell phones, and what you can do now with this kind of stuff to capture those memories and be able to relive them over and over again. And I just think it's bloody amazing. So there you have it, Mike's little rant. Now for some negatives, because it is a $279 drone, or $229 if you get the coupon or whatever else. It was a little finicky to get going. Not as finicky as my DJI. I always have issues with the DJI, connecting to the camera, to the, the iPhone and everything else. This wasn't quite so finicky, but it still wasn't flawless. And I don't think that's a diss on this particular drone. It's a diss on all drones that all seem to be very difficult when you use a phone to connect to them because the phone's got to be on the drone Wi-Fi and it's got to pair up and all that kind of stuff. If you've never used one, just be mindful of that. It takes a moment. And then you've got this calibration thing. Dude, I was spinning around in circles and it wouldn't calibrate, okay? I was doing the exact same kind of stuff that I do with my DJI and it would calibrate. TJ, my filming guy, had to help and he got it going by holding it with two hands and being able to do the full 360 sideways and then top to bottom. Again, just little nuances, but things you should be aware of. But look, I got a drone for free and was told to go play with it, fly it, film it, and if I want, test how durable it is. I think the long and short of it is the drone actually is pretty durable. The damage I don't think was sustained by flying into the tree. The propellers, the way that they flick around into two, I think it's a really smart move. They don't have those big ugly cages on them that no one ever uses anyway, and then they crash the drone and cause all kinds of damage. It was a big drop. Like... I had, to, I had to do you guys justice. I didn't want to fly at four feet and let it drop. I flew it up at like 34 feet and let it drop. And I think it landed right on the arm and that's what caused the damage. But look, my DJI cost me $200 to send in for repair. This thing only costs a little bit more than $200 for the whole thing. So even if I completely destroy it, I can replace it all for about the same price as repairing my DJI. Now, if we want to compare the two for a second, because I know what you're thinking, because I'm thinking it too. Mike, is it really a comparison? And I've already said, no, it's not. And it's not, and here's the reason why. The footage on this is shaky. The footage of my DJI is like smooth as butter, okay? Sm and I, I mean smooth. And that, I think, is the Achilles heel here. The drone's a lot of fun. It's really good. You're going to capture some raw footage really well. But it's not going to be professional level. It's not going to be super silky smooth. For that, you are going to spend three, four, five times as much money to get something decent. If that's what you need, this is not the one for you. If it's not what you need and you just want to goof around, have some fun, get a really cool Christmas gift for someone in the family, B-Wine F7 Mini is it B-Wine? Is it B-Wine? Better check. This could be the drone for you. You know, getting my drone stuck in a tree isn't the worst thing that's ever happened, but it's right up there. Another really interesting thing, which was spotted by TJ, my sometimes useful filming guy, it says on the box here, optical flow positioning. If you are like me, that might not mean a whole lot to you. If you are a Final Cut editor, you might say, hang on a second, Mikey. I've seen a setting on the menu that says optical flow processing. Hmm, optical flow, optical flow. I don't know about you, but when I was at school, I learned that one plus one usually makes two. So we got to dig in here at Mike Drops Tech and we tested this bad boy feature out for you. Ta-da, let me show you some footage to explain what optical flow does. This is really impressive for a drone at this price. I keep saying this, but bloody Nora, it's a $279 drone. 
it's pretty neat that they've incorporated this kind of feature so you can get that footage a little bit smoother. Still not butter smooth like the DJI Mavics and some of those higher end drones. But again, let's just take it for what it is. This is a low price entry level drone and it's got some killer features to go with it. You know, Amazon's been talking about drone deliveries for some time now, but I live in the South here in Texas and we got a few rednecks around and they just think that's skeet shooting with prizes. So, you know, I don't know if that's such a good thing or not. So, you know, we've got these prints behind me because we made some really cool prints of some of the pictures that we take here at Mike Drops Tech that we wanted to share with you guys, the viewers, before you hit that go button. Okay, I'm giving one away. This is a mini version, super high-end paper, archival grade. It was one of our test shots that we got. This one is not available. Money cannot buy this print, okay? It can buy these prints and these ones up here that you can't see, but it can't buy this one. All you gotta do is use the link in the description below and go shoot me a quick message on my website. We're gonna pick someone at random in the next couple of weeks and we're gonna send you this bad boy for free. So take it or leave it. You are welcome. Look, this is what happens when you live near a golf course. Look at it. Trespassing on my yard. Bloody orange golf balls everywhere. White golf balls everywhere. Over that side of the yard, I was cutting the grass yesterday. There must have been like nine golf balls all in a three square foot range. Maybe I could put a sign up on my fence that says, don't play golf if you don't know how. Look, here they are with the little buggies. All day, every day. Moved here because I wanted peace and quiet. Which is why we didn't want to do an actual comparison between the two. Probably don't want the vacuum cleaner going in the background, do we? If only I had a studio. If only I had like an office space where I could build a studio and not film at the studio in the house. Like that would be crazy but I have two of them and I still film at my home studio. But you weren't here and now the air's on. Oh my goodness. Bloody Nora, like where's the checklist? We're about to film. What? All the noise stops. The what? Well, noise off probably would be on the checklist, Mr. TJ. Let me know what questions you've got in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Check out some cool videos. Until next time, be amazing.